All right. Welcome back to Honeycombing with Allison and Nathan. Well, we're here today to get the buzz on Bella Cruz and Brady. <laughs> So today we'll be talking about Bella's piece. Bella's piece was about a friend who was Sydney and then became Marcel. And the opening to the piece is them pretending to be warrior cats. I don't know if any viewers out there are familiar with that book series. I did read it actually, but um, I read it kind of out of order. Like I don't think I ever wound up reading the first one, but I still really mm -hmm. loved it. <laughs> Yeah, it was definitely our, like, our, our life revolved around it for, like, <laughs> way too long, probably. <laughs> I'm looking back on it. I was telling Nathan before we started the interview, because he never read it, yeah. how weird it is for me now to look back on my childhood and realize that as, like, a second grader, I was reading about cats killing each other. <laughs> Honestly, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so asking you questions about this piece. Um, are you still in touch with the friend you wrote about? Um, so my friend, um, Marcel, I, he was like my best friend for like a very, very long time. Um, but once I, I moved around a lot when I lived in Florida and, uh, and he ended up eventually moving around a lot so we got to a point where we were like very far away from one another um so we kind of just kind of drifted apart um mm -hmm. recently like I've been talking to him a little bit more um but it's kind of weird I have been closer with his mother than uh <laughs> than anything else he um his parents are lesbian, so he has two moms, um, and one of them, Noreen, is the sweetest woman I've ever met in my life. Carla is also very nice, but Noreen is, like, like my mother, um, so I literally, <laughs> Shout out to whenever, I, yeah, <laughs> whenever I go to visit Florida, I, um, I, I hang out with Noreen, like, I don't, I don't even hang out with Marcel, I hang out with Noreen, it's, it's kind of weird. <laughs> so, uh, what state do you live in now? Oh, I live in upstate New York, so I'm not like New York City. I'm in the middle of nowhere. Um, my next door neighbors are cows, so. <laughs> so like, so did you go to college in New York after graduating from high school? Yeah, I'm uh, actually a junior at SUNY Polytechnic Institute, which sounds fancy, but it's not. Um, <laughs> and it's probably about 20 minutes from my house. I technically live in Westmoreland, New York, but it's it's out in Utica, which is like the nearest city to us. That's really cool. Yeah, that's cool. Um, so Bella, can you tell us about your time in the Echo? I understand that it wasn't a super long time, but. Oh yeah, I, um, I joined the Echo in my sophomore year. Um, my best friend, Emily though, was in the Echo like when it was still a club. Um, she was in it freshman year. Um, so I had always been like, associated with echo stuff even though I wasn't necessarily like in the club I would go to the events and whatever um but I was yeah I was in echo for sophomore junior and senior year um I don't know I they were basically my family um I don't know if you guys are still super super close like we were but um we were like <laughs> it Sorry. was I don't know it was kind of ridiculous needy. No, you're good. Uh, I have four cats, so they're all surrounding me as well. <laughs> but um, yeah, I, uh, they, I, I don't know. They were just like family. We were all super, super close the whole time. Um, I think the first year that it was a class, we were a little bit more awkward, um, a little bit more disorganized and didn't know what, quite what to do. Um, but the, uh, the second and third year of it actually being a class rather than a club was we were so tight. Um, yeah, I miss it a lot. I think that's the only thing that I miss about high school is, is being in the Echo. <laughs> so mm -hmm. you mentioned that, like, you said that it was like a family to you. And yeah. to me, it's also like a family. But like, what else is the Echo to you? I don't know. I know that we're, like, it's such a creative workspace. Um, and I think that that's 
another large part of what I miss about it rather than just like the familial ties I think um you know having that environment where like you know you walk into Vana's room you walk into 211 it's you know colorful ceiling tiles all the way through (laughs) and you know you have always a mess somewhere in the back corner and you know all the computers lined up against the wall there's probably some kid like typing away working on a piece over there like it's just a really nice you know place to enter like the the feeling of it is just warm and welcoming whether you're going in for an English class or whether you're going in for the echo you know um so as far as like the echo was for me it was that creative workspace like I don't really write that much anymore uh I did submit a piece to you guys's uh new magazine but I yeah yeah, you're good Uh, but I I I, that was the first thing that I had written in probably like a year and a half or two years. Um, I don't really have that inspiration anymore. And I, I think I would attribute it the most to the people around me in the echo and, and that creative work environment, you know. So going back to what you had said before, how you, you had a friend who was in the club with the echo before it was actually a class. Yep. Um, how different was the echo when it was a club versus when it was a class? Um, I think, uh, well, speaking as somebody who wasn't in the club, but, you know, af- off of her experience, I know that, like, club meetings at Steinbrenner were, like, really disorganized and short. Like, it was hard to get anything done. Um, and I, I'm sure they probably still are. Um, yeah, so we, um, I know that, like, she would complain a lot about things going on where it's it's hard to, you know, get the magazine done on time and like they I think at the time they only had one uh copy of the magazine a year because they couldn't you know they couldn't do two I don't remember I think that that's what it was but I I might be wrong um but I know that that was the biggest thing was actually being able to accomplish the things that they needed and um I don't know if they I think only every once in a while they would do like after school meetings um but for the most part, it was just dealing with like once a month meetings for half an hour that half the time you're just waiting for everybody to get there, you know? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so again, like you were part of the very first Echo class. So it's been 10 years since it first started, like the actual class. This is why yeah. like we're having these interviews go talking about like the Echo. So. Right. Did you ever like expect like the Echo to be like as big as it is today? Like we have like what that seven hundred something followers now on Instagram. We have like Poetry Cafe, Poetry Jam. We had Uncensored last year, Satirico, all that type of stuff. Yeah, yeah I, I don't know. It's kind of like crazy because I fo- I follow on Instagram and I I like look through everything and all the comments and I'm like wow and like there's even somebody uh who commented on something recently like I don't even go to this school like what the hell is going on type thing <laughs> and, like because because of all the berry stuff all of the b uh, uh ads um so I don't know it's kind of wild to look at that and I'm like wow you have people who have no reason to be following you right now like you guys are are doing that good and like keeping up your image that well like that's so crazy to me um I know we were like getting to that point because we had um we started satirico and and stuff like that but it it didn't seem like it was I don't know I don't even know how to describe it it didn't it didn't seem like it was going to go anywhere you know we didn't even know that we were going to be able to reach everybody at our school let alone people from other schools you know Mm-hmm. So, um, about your piece, for, so this is more of a memoir than fiction, correct? Because yeah. for some reason it was in the fiction category. The PDF oh. was all messed up. I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're, yeah. So I was curious, like, do you have like any other pieces? Like Vana mentioned that you have done like slam poems before that were like on the political side of things. Yes. Yeah, I do um, have. Oh God, what was the name of the? Uh first poem that I ever wrote um I don't even know the first poem that I wrote I performed at a poetry cafe um and I that was also my first time like doing something because like I was in marching band when I was in high school um (laughs) uh so yeah I uh 
I I would perform as like a group, you know, like I played the mm-hmm. tuba, so I was in the back, and I like didn't really need that like attention. So that was my first time like being on a stage like in front of a bunch of people, you know. Um, so I that was a big deal for me. But oh my god, I can't remember the name. Um, <laughs> I know it was basically like it was very disorganized. Like I look back on that poem, and I'm like, God, that's so cringy because like. <laughs> It, it was basically just me ranting about a bunch of political stuff like I uh, and like it, it had absolutely no rhyme or reason aside from me just sharing my opinions with the audience um which was awful um but yeah after that I did go on to uh perform a slam poem I remember this one titled blizzard um for the march for our lives um in Tampa so that was, I want to say 15,000 people or so um, that we had, like, you know how, I, I don't know if you guys have ever gone to a protest or anything, um, but when you show up, usually there's like somebody on a stage who's like, all right, we're going to talk. And they like hype you up for a little bit and then you go walk around. Um, so <laughs> that was in that, in, in that beginning part, um, I performed that poem, which was about, you know, school shootings and things like that. But um, yeah, I have I have several poems throughout high school that I performed about, you know, um, being mixed race because I am Puerto Rican and Irish. My father is from Puerto Rico. My mother is a white. Yes, lady. I've read your poem um, about that. It was really good, by the way. Just really thank good, you. Like, it was really yeah. good. That was another one that I look back on and I'm like, oh God, cringe. Like I don't know why. I like, <laughs> listen to myself speak and I'm like, Jesus Christ, shut up. Like I can't. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so I, I, I do have several, um, political slam poems, but for the most part, I, um, that was what I occupied myself with when I was in high school writing poems, I think, because it was, once you learn about free verse poems, you're like, oh, I can just make short <laughs> lines that don't need to rhyme. And, you know, I can just do that. <laughs> and, yeah, and then the you don't have to free worry. Verse poems give you. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. You don't have to worry about like, uh, 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 following a plot line or anything, you can do whatever the hell you want. So I, um, yeah, I, I was, I was about poems when I was in high school, but I did, I did still write fiction and things like that. Yeah. Um. So really quickly, going off of that, we've been talking a lot about so many pieces you've done, which all seem to be like political or nonfiction. So did you do a ton of fiction, or were you kind of more comfortable in the nonfiction zone? <clears throat> as far as fiction goes, I had um. A piece that I submitted for Writing Wednesday one time um, for, you gasp. <laughs> I'm, I love Writing Wednesday. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, it's definitely real fun. Um, but I, I submitted a piece, it was called Seeing White. Um, that was, I think the, the fiction piece that I'm the most proud of, it was about um, a gay couple, one of them is blind, but you don't necessarily find out that he's blind until later on in the piece, like you don't really realize it. Um, and, uh, he, the other one has a deaf younger brother. And so they're trying to get married. Um, the blind, uh, significant other is trying to propose. Um, but before he wanted to, you know, like learn ASL and make it a point to be like to his family and be like, look, like I'm going to, you know, make this effort despite my disability. I want to you know, be able to communicate with your son, even though the son was probably like eight, seven years old, something like that. Like not, not like a 20 year old brother or something who's like Mm -hmm. super close with his brother. Um, So he ends up, he is spending a lot of time with um, a friend of theirs who is a teacher and she's teaching him ASL. um, And then once uh, their family gets there from out of town, the uh, other boyfriend's family gets there from out of town he asks the younger brother he like kind of kneels down in front of him in the car and like he so like when when a blind person needs to speak ASL they have to feel the signs on somebody's hands so they kind of just cover their hands so he grabs the younger brother's hands listens to what he has to say and then signs back to him and asks him for permission to propose to his brother basically um so that was the piece that I was definitely the most most proud of. Um, I ended up doing cry. nothing so with sweet. that. <laughs> yeah, I didn't do anything with that. I didn't submit it anywhere. I just brought it to Writing Wednesday, and now it's sitting in my computer somewhere. Um, but <laughs> I think that's 
that and then I, I started writing a book before uh, I graduated that I also haven't touched in a long time. Ooh. <laughs> All right. Yeah, but you've been so much fun to talk to. So thank you for letting us interview you. Yeah, of course. Yeah, and I, I was to definitely... see you. Oh, sorry, go ahead. <laughs> no, I was just gonna say it was definitely a good time. Yeah. <laughs> I hope to see you at the Poetry Cafe as well. Yeah, I will Maybe definitely try. <laughs> I don't know what time. I think it's like six, right? Yeah, Nathan, you have her number though. Like you'll send her. Yeah, I can text you and Bono can also text you or email you. So we got ways to communicate. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I will, I will do my best to be there. Thank you. Awesome. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you so much. Um, have a great rest of your day. Thank you. You too. Thank you. <laughs> thank you for tuning up into Honey Coming Through the Years with Allison and Nathan. Where we got the buzz on Bella Cruz O'Grady. <laughs>